now you've seen this before but it's an important point so we are going to cover it again in this lecture this is the concept of full price clean price and accrued interest full price is also sometimes called dirty price okay so what does i'll explain this with a very simple example and then work on a slightly more complicated example let's say that we are talking about a two year annual pay bond and let's say that this bond has a coupon rate equal to 10 percent it has a par value equal to 100 and let's say that the ytm on this is also equal to 10 percent so if we draw out the cash flows time 0 time 1 time 2 the cash flow on this bond is 10 over here and 110 over here the 10 dollar coupon plus the 100 par value since the coupon rate is equal to the ytm this bond is issued at par so the issue price is equal to 100 now you bought this bond over here and let's say that you sell it to me after a six month period so at the 0.5 year mark you are selling this bond to me the question is how much will you sell this bond for let's see if you if you if you do what we've talked about so far and you come up with the present value at this point of the future cash flows assuming ytm has stayed the same the present value that you will calculate over here will be equal to 100 so the par value or the value of the bond is not changing because the YTM is not changing. So according to what we have learned so far, the present value of the bond is 100. So you might think that you will sell me the bond for 100. But does that really make sense? The point here is this, you are selling the bond to me, but when you sell the bond to me i will get this entire coupon because i hold the bond so i will get that entire coupon of ten dollars however you held the bond for this period so half of this period so for six out of the 12 months you held the bond so the interest that you accrued over here should really belong to you which means that very simplistically put if we have 180 days that you held the bond and we are assuming here that there are 360 days in the year then ideally you should get your share of this $10 coupon and the most common convention for calculating your share it is the number of days that you held the bond which is 180 divided by 360 which is the number of days in the year multiplied by the interest or the coupon payment which is 10 so based on this calculation the accrued interest or your part of the next coupon payment is five dollars which means that ideally when uh, you sell me the bond then you should sell it to me for 100 plus 5 is equal to 105 that 105 is called the full price or the dirty price the clean price which is the price at which a bond is normally quoted is simply the present value of the future cash flows so this 100 is the clean price the 5 is the accrued interest which the seller of the bond has accrued so that's the component or the part of the next coupon payment that the seller has accrued and in order to make this transaction a clean simple transaction when a bond is sold it is sold at the full price so that no further transaction needs to take place when the coupon payment is made now let's look at a slightly more complicated example and i am basing this on problem 18 in the 2011 curriculum and approximately here is the data that is given we are talking about a thousand dollar par value bond with a coupon rate equal to five percent and we are told that this bond is quoted at 101 and 12 32 percent of par so this is the current quoted price of this bond we are told further 
that the coupon payments for this bond are made on 15th January and 15th July. So clearly this is a semi-annual bond where coupon payments are made twice a year, middle of Jan and middle of July. We are also told that this value, clean value of the bond is on 8th April. So on 8th April this bond is sold. So this is our settlement date. On 8th April the bond is sold for this price and we are asked to calculate the full price. We are actually given a few more pieces of information. We are told that between the settlement date and the next coupon date there are 98 days. This could be calculated but it might be cumbersome so the question has given you that between the settlement date and the next coupon date is 98 days and you are also told that there are 183 days between between these coupon payments. So the total number of days is 183 and the question asks you to calculate the full price. Now there are several points here from a practical point of view. One is the quoted price is the clean price. So normally when a bond is quoted the price is being quoted in terms of a clean price. In the US for some reason there is a convention used where we simply use fractions and fractions of 32. So what, what you can do is simply convert this fraction into a decimal. So that's one point. The other point is the price is generally quoted as a percentage of par. Now essentially what we are saying is that if the par value is 1000 and the bond is at 101 and 12 32 percent of par then you simply figure out what the clean price should be and the way you can do that is first of all figure out what what this is in decimal terms and the answer is 101.375 so if the bond is 101.375 percent of par then what is the clean price the actual clean price, the actual clean price is 101% of this. So that would be 1013.75. So that's the clean price. Now how do we find the full price? To find the full price, remember the full price is equal to the clean price plus the accrued interest. We've already figured out the clean price. Now we need to figure out the accrued interest. Accrued interest, as you just saw, is the interest that the seller has accrued based on holding the bond for this number of days. Now that's not directly given, but you can easily calculate that by saying 183 minus 98. So let's do that. So this is 85 days. So the, the bond, the guy who is selling the bond has held the bond for 85 days. So what's the accrued, in, what's the interest that he's accrued or it's really the share of the next coupon that he's accrued. So that is equal to 85 divided by 183 multiplied by the next coupon payment. Now what's the coupon rate? It's 5%. Remember this would be an annualized number. So every six months we will have 2.5%. 2.5% of par value is equal to 25. So you calculate your accrued interest based on this. To that accrued interest you are adding the clean price of 1013.75 and the sum of these give you the full price. If you want to double check your answer you can look at the solution for problem 18 in the curriculum. I'm assuming that you can easily do this class 8 mathematics. Okay, now let me just touch again on something I showed you earlier. I talked about this concept where we have the price over here and time to maturity. I said this is a par value of 1000 and I said that for a discount bond the price of the bond over time will go up to the par value. So I gave an example where I said that 
four years from maturity the price of a discount bond was 935 roughly and then over the four years the value of the bond went up and in the end it was thousand and for a premium bond i said that the price of the bond changes like this now the question is this these values that are, you are seeing over here are they the clean price or the dirty price and the answer is that the prices or values that we have shown over here are the clean prices and that's what is normally quoted how do you know this is the clean price because the way you can think of it is if a bond is sold just a few minutes before maturity according to this picture it is being sold at a uh, thousand however the guy who is going to get the bond will obviously get thousand as well as the next coupon payment so his next the payment that he will receive uh, as soon as the bond matures is actually thousand plus the coupon payment of say 80 so if we were looking at the dirty price then the price just before maturity should be 1080 but in this graphic or in this pictorial we are only showing 1000 so that means that we are only talking about the clean price and effectively what we are saying is uh, this is the clean price and to figure out how much we need to sell it for we need to figure out how much interest has accrued and that also actually would belong to the seller of the bond but the core simple point here is that when you see a picture like this where the value over time is going up to par what we are really talking about is the clean price and that highlights another point that whenever a number is given or a price is given for a bond the default assumption is that we are quoting the clean price Now let's talk about the concept of arbitrage free bond prices and I alluded to this at the start of the presentation. You have already studied the concept of spot rates. The spot rates can be thought of as the rates on zero coupon bonds and you will have say a one year spot rate, a two year spot rate, three year spot rates etc. We also obviously have three month spot rates, nine month spot rates and so on and as I have said a one year spot rate means what's the yield you are getting on a one year zero coupon bond a two year spot rate means what's the yield you get on a two year bond another way of looking at it is if you lock in your money for one year the return that you are getting is the one year spot if you lock in your money for two years the return you are getting is the two year spot and now the most accurate way of pricing a bond is to use spot rate so if you have a three-year bond where let's say that you are getting and to keep it simple I'll just talk initially about an annual bond so you have a three-year bond where you are getting 10 10 and 10 plus 100 over three years and your one year spot rate let's say is 10 percent your two year spot rate is 12 percent and your three year spot rate is 14 percent the most accurate way to value this bond is to take every cash flow and discount it back at the appropriate spot rate. So if you are getting $10 after one year, the present value of this should be 10 divided by 1.1. So we are using the one year spot rate, which is 10%. Then the next cash flow you get is after two years. So the present value of this should be 10 divided by 1.12 squared. That's because this money that you are getting after two years should be discounted at the two year spot rate and the third cash flow should be discounted at the three year spot rate so so this number over here should be discounted at 14 percent so you should have 110 divided by 1.14 cubed and then add those three numbers together and that should give you your arbitrage free bond price so let's use this in a example and say for a minute that we have a situation where a three-year bond uh, in some country that uses uh, annual bonds so we have a three-year bond and the 10 percent treasury note in that country is currently selling for 97 and 
we are given these three year spot rates so is there a arbitrage opportunity to figure out whether there's an arbitrage opportunity we figure out what the arbitrage free price should be and compare that price with the market price of the bond now as you've just seen let's say that the par value on this bond is 100 and what is the arbitrage free price this is a 10 percent bond so the first payment is going to be ten dollars so that should be discounted at the discounted at the one year spot which is nine percent so we should have 10 divided by 1.09 plus the second value of 10 should be discounted at 10 percent so 10 over 1.1 squared and then the third cash flow which should be 110 that's the par value plus the third and final coupon should be discounted at 11 percent so this should be 1.11 cube and if you do the maths you should get ninety-seven point eight six. So this is what the arbitrage free price of the bond should be, but the market price is ninety-seven. Now what do you do? And you use the rule number one of finance, which is buy low, sell high. No matter how much you finance you study, if you don't live by this rule, you are bound to lose money. And that's why it's often referred to as rule number one of finance. Plus, this rule also helps you figure out how to make money when there is an arbitrage opportunity. So you need to buy what's priced low and sell high. So what's low? The treasury note is selling at the market for 97 and based on your wonderful calculation here the arbitrage free price should be 97 so clearly this is low so that means that you buy in the market for 97.00 so you buy this bond and essentially when you buy this bond for 97 what you have is three cash flows in the future so when you bought this for 97 Remember, this is a three year bond and one, two, three. The cash flows that you are going to get then are 10, 10 and 110. What you can do then given these spot rates is sell these three cash flows independently. So given that the one year spot rate is 9%, you can sell this cash flow after one year at that price. You can sell the second cash flow at this price and you can sell the third cash flow at this price. So when you sell those three cash flows at these three prices, and essentially then the amount of money that you will make is 97.86. So without taking any risk, you have made 0 0.86 per bond. Do this for a million bonds and you can become very rich. So that simplistically explains the, uh, the way you can make money in arbitrage. But realistically, what will happen? Realistically, if such an opportunity does arise, then you will have your bloodthirsty bond traders all piling on over here. Lots of buying will take place. And when lots of buying takes place, immediately the price of the bond in the market will go up and that arbitrage opportunity will vanish very fast and because of that generally these markets are fairly efficient that is it this was a relatively simple reading as always practice hard put your comments on youtube and if you like this video please click on the like button